Yesterday, Half-Life 2 turned 20 years old. This project changed the whole industry's idea of what games can and should be. Valve showcased previously unseen technologies and revolutionary physics, which would change the direction of FPS games for years to come. In honor of this event, Valve has released a huge update for the original game, which is being given away absolutely free right now. They added all the episodes to the main game, added full support for the workshop and custom modifications. Gathered all the people who took part in creating the game and recorded completely new developer commentaries that you can listen to right during the walkthrough. But most importantly, in collaboration with the production team from Secret Tape, they shot a full-fledged two-hour documentary about the detailed development process of the game, in which they shared a lot of previously unseen footage and features. We finally heard stories about how they were hacked and someone leaked an early build of the game. How their own publishers tried to sue them. Why did they almost ran out of money? How Steam was created and much, much more. There is too much for one video, so today we will talk about one of the most interesting topics. What happened to Half-Life 2 Episode 3 and what the developers think about future games in this universe. But while you have time, check out Skins Monkey. Use code Gaben and get up to a $5 bonus. Select a few of your current skins, pick a new one in the same price range and exchange your old and ugly CSGO items to something new and shiny from Counter-Strike 2. Use code Gaben and buy skins much cheaper with a 30 plus 5% top-up bonus. Skins Monkey links and my code down below. Firstly, it is worth noting that this is not about Half-Life 3, which is a hot topic due to huge amounts of new leaks and rumors. And also not about other iterations of Half-Life 3, which have been cancelled in the last 10 years. This is the third episode, the development of which stopped in 2007. However, we will also discuss the new game. After the development of the first Half-Life and the difficulties of Half-Life 2, Valve developers came to the conclusion that creating separate games in a short period of time is too energy consuming and not very productive. Instead, they decided to divide the team into different groups that worked in parallel. Thanks to this, they could afford to release new content almost every 12 months. Thus, the idea of an episodic mode model was born. After the successful release of the first and second episode, something unexpected happened. The team deadlocked themselves. Each of their projects brought and demonstrated some innovative ideas. The original game is of course about physics and facial animation. The first episode is about improved enemy AI, coordination in battle, destructibility and co-op play, along with a partner constantly following the player in the form of Alex. The second episode has less linear levels and more open spaces with chases, improved graphics, unusual enemies and weapons. The second episode was longer than the first one. The development process was extremely difficult and they had to work over time. Crunches began. The third episode not only had to keep the bar raised, it had to break through the ceiling and fly into space. Of course, the main actions took place in the Arctic, where Gordon and Alex went to search for a mysterious ship called Borealis. The plot has never been the basis of this game. First of all, the developers thought about some interesting mechanics that could be revealed during the story. Before finally freezing in the project, the game was a separate set of playable levels, not connected in any way, and a separate story with early concepts of what the game should have been. In fact, the project was six months away from the stage when it would no longer make sense to cancel the game. But the pressure kept rising. In their opinion, the existing features were not cool enough to be the foundation of the next Half-Life. They simply could not come up with something more significant. Alongside this, Valve delegated the development of the fourth episode to Arcane, where the action took place in Ravenholm and the main character was Adrian Shepard. However, in conversations with Valve, even they admitted that they had difficulties brainstorming some innovative mechanics. One of the key features in the third episode was supposed to be a freeze gun. Using it, you could create ice objects of any shape or forms. The first mode allowed freezing the space by shooting an ice beam. Make a small wall to protect yourself from enemy attacks. Small stairs or slides for easier navigation on the map. Or activate the second mode and create an ice path along which you could move faster and more efficiently during the combat sequences. At the same time, the bullets will affect this structure and it will begin to crack and collapse. Of course, you could freeze enemies and play with them using physics. After such a long time, it seems that this idea lay in one of the main mechanics for Kelvin from the new Valve game called Deadlock. 
The second interesting feature is a strange creature in the form of slime balls. We have repeatedly seen leaks and even small prototypes from the community, but devs have finally shared official information. This blob could take absolutely any form. After being hit, it scatters into pieces but then gathers together. Each piece exists like a separate entity and if necessary, they could attack enemies independently of each other. They could pass through fences, destroy objects and move in unusual conditions. Their main attack is essentially sucking the enemy in. Whether it was a small headcrab or a full-fledged zombie, the blob simply consumed the creature entirely. They fully interacted with physical objects and most likely they could be torn or you could cover yourself with obstacles from being eaten. Little bit later, this technology was reused in gels for the second portal. It is important to note that the developers haven't talked about other interesting features. In 2011, the community found mentions of some in-game entities. Of course, there were the blob and the ice gun, which were finally officially confirmed. But additionally, there were weapons called weaponizer, teleporter, flamethrower and flechette. For those who suddenly don't know, these are projectiles fired by hunters in the second episode. Most of these items will remain a mystery, but they showed weaponizer for a split second, either by accident or on purpose. According to rumors, with the help of this weapon, it was possible to control the physical properties of objects. You could hit metal or freeze water so literally weaponize normal objects and use them as weapons. Considering all the HLX leaks that I talked about in previous videos, it seems that this is not just a coincidence and they decided to not talk about those things because they might keep them for the future. Especially considering that Valve constantly reuses old ideas for new projects. However, the second obstacle in the development of the final episode turned out to be the first Left 4 Dead. Third episode was too early in development to give it all the attention, when Left 4 Dead was already preparing for release and needed extra hands. At that time, it was considered a more significant project and in retrospect we can say that this was justified and the game will stay in history forever. By the time the development of other projects was over, they felt that it was too late to return to the third episode. They were late and to make the next Half-Life they needed a completely new game engine. However, now they admit that it was a huge mistake. They could well have allocated additional time, calculated all the pros and cons and finished what everyone was waiting for. However, they are not too upset about the missed opportunities, because thanks to this they were able to spend more time on other games, such as Left 4 Dead 2, Portal 2 or multiplayer projects that formed Valve Company and the Steam platform that we all know. At the end of the documentary, Gabe says that the ending of Alex gave them the opportunity to reflect and understand what exactly they need to continue the story. According to him, Half-Life has always been a tool that demonstrated to players the possibilities and innovative solutions that create previously unseen gaming experiences. And as he believes, at the moment the gaming industry has a lot of space to use such opportunities again. Roughly speaking, he's like before we were stupid, but we did not realize it. But after releasing Half-Life Alex, we finally understood that we made an error. And now we not only see how it can be done. We see how it needs to be done using the opportunities that have appeared in the gaming industry. Especially with a new Source 2 engine. Personally, after watching the entire documentary, this is how I interpret it. The fact that they publicly talked about the third episode and even showed real footage already means quite a lot. They admitted their mistakes and the documentary is literally a therapy session in which they openly shared their injuries and fears. Not only did they say 4 years ago at the release of Half-Life Alex that they know how to continue the story, but now they are saying the same thing. They still know and nothing has changed. Considering all the leaks that I covered in previous videos about HLX, which has been in development for almost 5 years, and a new documentary, they literally say, well, yes, we are making Half-Life 3. Oh, and by the way, look at the new art, cause Dabib says that he drew it by hand, but this gravity gun is definitely new, and it looks like a 3D render. Or am I just too clueless? Let me know in the comments and if you haven't watched it yet, be sure to check out two previous videos about HLX leaks where I talked about a huge amount of innovative mechanics.